David R. Guttery is the president of Keystone Financial Group in Trustville, Alabama. David Guttery and Seth Edgel are financial advisors who represent Emeritus Investment Company, LLC, and Emeritus Advisory Services. Please stay tuned through the end of the video for additional important disclosure information. Hello everyone, today I'm joined by David Guttery, President of Keystone Financial Group here in Trustville to discuss investment management during times of heightened sentiment. David, thanks so much for joining us today. Within our last three interviews, you've described a bubble that you believe is building within the artificial intelligence sector. And last month, you offered your thoughts about the palpable negative sentiment that seems to be pervasive in the markets. So today, I believe you're going to share your thoughts on lemmings and perspective. Is that correct? That's correct. Don't be a lemming. 32 years ago, my Finance 412 professor put that brain fold into my mind. He would engage the class by posing scenarios and then randomly selecting students to opine with their thoughts. Well, one particular day, as I was halfway through my response, he extended his hand and interrupted me mid-sentence with, don't be a lemming, Mr. Guttery. Well, in case you didn't already know, a lemming is a furry brown rodent, and they tend to live in very large, concentrated communities, and they migrate, as do many other species of animals. In the 17th century, naturalist studies in Norway concluded that migratory patterns were often sparked by disruption or fear. Many studies recorded herds of these lemmings reaching a water impediment into which they would dive and attempt to cross. The problem is that lemmings aren't the best of swimmers and many in the herd died from drowning. Well, this is the nexus behind the phrase, don't be a lemming. It's a metaphor for human behavior. Very often herd mentality driven by fear, panic, or speculation can result in actions that are, shall we say, less than healthy. I love this far side cartoon and I refer to it during periods of market and economic distress. See the lemming in the upper right corner with the floaty ring around his waist? Yeah, be that guy. Seriously, we as investors must truly be mindful of not only the palpable sentiment that I described within my last video, but furthermore, we must be aware of how such inspires and impacts our behavior. Don't be a lemming can also be a metaphor for thinking outside of the box. Resist the temptation to buy into the herd mentality of the day and think outside of the box. I help my clients with this exercise on a daily basis. You've heard Warren Buffett suggest that you should be greedy when others are fearful. And fearful when others are greedy? Well, if you agree with that statement, then realize that it is impossible to be greedy when others are fearful if you're running with the pack of lemmings. Rise above, think outside of the box, get a bigger box if you have to. And as we'll discuss next, perspective is the key to making this all work. Well, I love the lemming metaphor. And yes, that helps to understand perils of running with the herd mentality. You mentioned perspective. So that's a great segue into my next question. How do you help clients keep a long-term perspective during times of economic and market distress? Well, there are several ways to do that, but one seems to be most impactful. So let me ask you, what happened on October 19th, 1987? Well, hmm, well, I'm not sure, but it must have something to do with the market since that's the topic of our discussion. Yes, it does. Let me give you some backstory first, though. I was in my first Finance 101 class at the University of Alabama. I want you to get the image of Santa Claus in your mind, older fella white hair, white beard, rosacea in the cheeks. This guy bounced into class every day, always happy, and he would always begin the class with the joke of the day. Now mind you, these were the cornball kinds of jokes that would make you bury your head in your hand, but he made the class fun and you never wanted to miss his lecture. On this particular Monday, he dragged into class, stoic, and was as white as a sheet of paper. No joke of the day. He placed his book on the lectern and began writing on the board. And it was such a stark change of behavior that my classmates and I exchanged glances and wondered if someone had died. As it turns out, on that Monday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 22.6% in one day. 
36 years later and across other major periods of disruption like 9-11, Y2K, Ebola, SARS, and COVID, we've never seen anything close to this again. Now, for perspective's sake, by the end of the year in 1987, the Dow Jones Industrial Average finished higher by 2.3%. Now, I was in school, so I was unaware of what was happening, but I can only imagine the panic and the negative sentiment that must have been pervasive with investors at that time. And this was before the age of smartphones and the Internet. Can you imagine how much worse the level of panic would have been if information had been readily available as it is today? So let me demonstrate the one way that I use to help clients remain with perspective. This is what losing over 22% looks like in one day. And this is what it looks like to lose 22% on October 19, 1987. My vision is completely occluded. If I tried to walk somewhere, I'd probably run into something and hurt myself. All right, now, you hold that. Okay. This is what losing 22% in one day looks like on October the 19th, 2017. The dimensions of the event did not change. We still lost 22% in one day, but my proximity to it did change. Now my vision is unoccluded. I mentioned other periods of time like both Gulf Wars, the Russian ruble crisis, Y2K, 9-11, SARS, Ebola, the Great Recession, and now COVID and its aftermath. There have been many other times when our vision has been occluded, and each time, with time, distance, and proximity, vision and clarity is restored. When you're working with a financial professional, you are relying on us to have the dispassionate outlook and the thick skin necessary to avoid the persuasion of herd mentality as we tactically manage portfolios through such periods of occlusion toward the end of accomplishing long-term planning goals. Wow, David, that really is a powerful demonstration of perspective. So what, in your opinion, are some of the dangers that can come with losing perspective during times such as these? Well, we've talked in previous videos about what I've called coiled springs. So think of a spring. As anxiety and sentiment become palpable, that spring is cramped down more and more tightly. And at the peak of the anxiety, there's a lot of potential energy stored in that coiled spring. This is an analogy for undervalued stocks. In my opinion, by the quantitative data, there are a myriad of stocks that are trading at levels that are lower than they should be otherwise trading. By keeping a long-term perspective, you're making such periods of anxiety work for you. By having the intestinal fortitude to be greedy when others are fearful and accumulate new or more shares of such companies at fear-induced lower price points. One day, a catalyst emerges that causes the market to recognize that coiled spring. It could be a positive comment from an analyst or a better-than-expected earnings report. The paradox of a coiled spring is that you must be sitting on it first before it pops if it's going to be of any benefit to you. Much like being unable to surf a wave once it's passed by, likewise you can't chase an uncoiled spring. You either had it or you didn't. So the danger is giving in to fear-induced capitulation and sitting in cash and missing what could be a sharp and sudden rebound in the value of a company upon which you gave up and sold at the wrong time. Well, David, that makes a lot of sense, so I'm curious. How can companies that should be trading at higher values find themselves trading at significant discounts? How does that happen, and how do you recognize such value when it exists? Well, we've talked about this in previous videos as well, especially as it pertains to the Federal Reserve and the shock that markets felt when the approach to removing accommodation was as heavy-handed as we've seen in the last 40 years. There are a basket of stocks, for example, that I refer to as being COVID orphans. These are stocks that surged to untenably high levels during the crisis. We were working from home, consuming from home, and the stock values of companies that made it possible for us to continue moving forward skyrocketed. Post-crisis, we observed profit-taking, and, in my opinion, short selling on the part of hedge funds that drove the values of these companies into untenably low valuation ranges. And then the Fed stepped in, and it has preoccupied the market's attention ever since. 
In my opinion, there are many companies that were overly sold and just forgotten about when the Fed redirected the attention of the market. Now, I rely on quantifiable data and dispassionate diagnostic tools to evaluate these opportunities of value dislocation. I have no idea when these coiled springs might pop, but I am comfortable in my analysis of the valuation. And furthermore, I'm comfortable with the acquisition of more shares, the dilution of cost basis, and waiting on the market to wake up once we have greater clarity and proximity to the event that caused the dislocation in the first place. Well, David, as always, thanks so much for this information. And for additional information, David may be reached through the means listed upon the following screen. For the Trustful Tribune, I'm Brandon Dawkins. David Guttery and Seth Edgel independently offer securities and investment advisory services through Emeritus Investment Company, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, and Emeritus Advisory Services. Information provided in today's segments is gathered from sources believed to be reliable. However, its accuracy cannot be guaranteed and should not be interpreted as tax or legal advice. Any performance stated is past performance and is not indicative of future results.